guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage, working on the free tee again. And for anybody that watches these videos regularly, you will see the scene has changed. Uh, we have the body back on. So I needed to uh, test fit some stuff to make sure uh, that uh, my patch panels that I'm making for the rear corners, the rear lower corners, fit how I want. So I wanted to test fit the body back on. And it also uh, happens that I have some help coming today for the free tee to redo or redesign the headers slash exhaust on this car. So I built kind of a down and dirty, uh, typical drive shaft exhaust uh, header set up for this car earlier this summer. And they looked okay, but the more I stared at it, the more I thought that they kind of overpowered the side view of the car and they were just a little too big for how small and low this car sat so i wanted to do something a little more elegant if you will and also wanted to do something that was a little more unique so looking at some of my old photos of dry lakes cars and uh, and like dirt track cars i saw a couple cars that were really neat that had uh, two pipes, the front and rear ports on a flathead. They would merge together into one pipe and then there would be a single pipe that would come out the center uh, exhaust port and they would run all the way back and basically two pipes would be kind of stacked on top of each other and run. Uh, on some of the cars they would run it right across the center of the door. On my car I wanted to kind of drop down and go below the door because I want to obviously have my doors functioning. So that's what we're going to do. I have my buddy Ben who his day job, he builds uh, prototypes exhausts and headers for uh, high-end exotic cars and he has a ton of experience in tu tubing work and also working with stainless. I thought it would be really neat on this car to do a kind of mild polished stainless exhaust on it that as it kind of blues and ages it will look really really cool uh, on the car and just as a little bit nicer or elegant than what I had built for the car. So I'm asking for his help today. I'm going to try and just stay out of his way and just give him a hand where he needs to be. Uh, but he's going to kind of mock everything up with my kind of eye to get everything sitting how we want. And he has a bunch of just kind of drops from mandrel bends uh, already set aside. We're going to be using inch and three quarters tubing. And we also cut out some stainless flanges that will go on the, uh, on the exhaust uh, on the block obviously and it should turn out pretty cool. So he's gonna be working on that while he's working on that I'm gonna work on getting the uh, radiator support rods for the top of the radiator I'm gonna make a set of those now everything on this car is kind of really tight Compact and it is difficult to get everything to kind of fit all in one place with the especially in the engine bay area so I'm gonna need to build some uh, support rods that are kind of have some crazy bends in them so that they kind of fit around everything and also will go into the firewall and support everything. So what I'm going to do is repurpose some old uh, Model A uh, brake rods for the mechanical brakes. I, uh, I always keep these around because all my cars I use hydraulic brakes but I do keep these rods laying around because they're really handy for making brackets, exhaust hangers, all sorts of things but in this case they're going to work awesome for making some uh, support rods. I picked some of the longer ones I have so that I have plenty of room to put all of my bends in them. Uh, one end of them is already uh, tapped so that you can fit a, uh, a nut right on there. So I'm going to scavenge some nuts from some other rods. Then I'm going to cut it off and tap the other side. We should be able to pull everything tight. So I'm uh, going to give you kind of just a mismatch of what's going on today, but we should have some pretty cool updates by the end of the day. So let's get started. Oh, yeah, that looks cool. 
Yeah, I think that'll be cool. Uh, Flow is in. Yeah, there's two more spikes, so kind of like that. I think it'll just it'll make this bend just disappear. That little yeah. bit of a bend, it'll just take your eye from it. It's, yeah, you won't really realize it's also bending there. Yeah. And then just have a little kick out of here. Yeah, then you'll only really see the down bend a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll be killer. How's that? Too close to the body there? Yeah, I gotta trim this back. I can open this up a little bit more, but that'll just kind of okay. just gonna slow the legs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, busy day today, uh, might not seem like a lot got done, but we were doing some pretty tedious work. Uh, ben was working real hard to get the tubing uh, cut and fit up to make this all flow how I wanted to. Uh, we wanted to keep the tubing pretty tight against the, uh, against the frame here so it doesn't go outside of the frame rail in the front. And then we wanted it to kind of drop and, and flow out. So we came up with a pretty good idea. Ben kind of made it all happen while I was working on some other stuff. but. Uh, what we worked on is uh, he got a bend going in the back here and then we did a pretty cool idea for the merge in the back where the front and rear cylinders are going to merge together. We actually need to kind of bend the pipe out just a little bit because the body obviously gets wider and then we need to drop it down to get it down kind of below the, uh, the door. So we're kind of merging everything together right there. It was kind of a an idea that I had, but uh, we weren't quite sure if it would work, but it actually ended up working out pretty well. So uh, Ben got the merge kind of tacked in place. That looks pretty good. Uh, he got the center uh, Siamese port here. He got that pipe flowing and stacked on top of the other pipe. And then we can uh, get a bend going that, that matches the bottom tube. Enable this to stay stacked 
on top of each other and go below the door and run uh, back to just in front of the rear tire. So I'm really happy with how that came out. This first side is going to probably be the most difficult. The second side will have kind of an idea of how this is all going to flow and Ben can kind of knock all that out. Um, again, I kind of stepped back and tried to stay out of his way because he has a lot more experience with uh, fitting up tubing and everything and also working with stainless. So uh, he was probably a little quicker than I was and I think it's going to turn out honestly a little bit nicer. And that's my favorite thing about this classic car hobby is that uh, everybody has their, their strengths and weaknesses and we all have different tools in each other's shops that, uh, you know, everybody in this area around here that I'm friends with, we all kind of just uh, help each other out and let each other borrow tools and stuff. Again, uh, Ben is much stronger with this type of work, so I let him help me accomplish, you know, this vision I have, and anytime Ben needs help with stuff on his end, I'm happy to help, lend, lend him tools, etc. And that's really what this hobby, I think, should be about, is helping each other get, you know, get the job done, which is, is really cool. So. Got the header moving along pretty good. Uh, I think another day of work on this, we should be able to get this header all kind of mocked up and then we can start working on copying the other side. On the, uh, the radiator rods, I was able to get those all uh, finished up and uh, got them all mounted. So what I ended up doing is I had to kind of start with doing a bend that went around the radiator cap on the uh, passenger side. We needed to get the rod to kind of roll around the radiator cap and then head straight back. Uh, a lot of times on these cars you will run the radiator rods kind of on the outside and they will run along on the outside or they'll run above uh, the, uh, the radiator to, uh, hoses. But on this car because everything's so low and chopped down and the engine kind of sits high, I can't run them on top because we'd be running the rods all the way on the top of the cow. It doesn't work. So I wanted to keep it right just a little bit below the top of the, of the cow um, and it worked out pretty good. I went about inch and a half, two inches down from the top of the cow, uh, just below some box tubing that's in the, um, that's in the, the bracing behind the firewall, ran uh, the rods through there and I kind of snaked it all around so it went around uh, the, the water necks on the heads and then it dropped down and kind of went in and it was kind of uh, a lot of trial and error, a lot of bending stuff over my knee, bending it around. No real fancy tools for that. It's just kind of finding some tubing to bend around that had the right radius, using my knee, my hip, whatever, to kind of adjust it, tweak it, tap, tap the ends, uh, cut the thing down, tap the ends, and it all fits pretty good. I think it flows pretty well. Biggest thing was I didn't really want to see too much of the rods from the side view of the car. Uh, there's already a lot going on with the, with the uh, cow steering, the headers, all that. Kind of a lot going on, so I figured I could kind of tilt the rods down so that they're hidden behind the radiator tubes and you only see just a little bit down in there. So it, it's going to be painted black. They should kind of disappear, which is what I want them to do. So some other stuff pops on the car. So uh, neat little progress on the car, some refinements, but I'll be happier in the end. Uh, I really am tempted to just kind of power through this and hit the end goal of driving the car, but I think some of these little things will really add to the special touches on the car. On a car that's already very, very unique, I think this will help with just making it that much more special and uh, just give it that custom touch. So that's all I have for this one. I appreciate you guys watching and following along on the Free T uh, Saga. We do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. And uh, we really, really appreciate you guys to follow. And uh, anybody that wants to weigh in, I'd love to hear what you guys think. Do you like the new idea for the exhaust system or do you like the old, uh, simplified, more traditional, uh, or common, I should say, exhaust system? Drop us a line in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say as always. And I will do my best to answer every one of you in the comments. Thanks guys, catch you later.